Hello everyone. Welcome to part two of lecture week 10. So in this uh, video, we're going to cover uh, the specifically integration test, stationarity and uh, the z-score used to generate the training signals for the PAL training strategy. So let's look at the first process flow. Um, we have two stocks uh, under study, right? So these two stocks are likely uh, alone stationary. So non-stationary means that uh, their statistical properties are not fixed, right? They keep changing. And uh, this makes it difficult to do statistical analysis because uh, in statistical analysis, we assume that the underlying factors are fixed, but now they're changing. So, uh, so it's not uh, um, reliable for statistical analysis. Um, so there are two sets we can do to test the co-integration. And we want to look at, we want to find the pairs of assets that are correlated or co-integrated with each other, right? So the correlation and co-integration are different uh, uh, concepts and we'll, we'll talk about them later. So um, one test is called Johansson test. So this works by identifying a linear combination of two assets such as the resulting series, the resulting linear combination is stationary. Right, so we we'll have input to to non stationary uh, data, and then output we have a stationary time series data. Right. So another test is called uh, angle grandeur test. Right. So this works by at by first building a linear regression model between the two assets, and then uh, we identify the residuals as the uh, spread of these two assets. So these two sets are the euro test we use to test for um, co-integration. So based on the uh, these two tests, we will have a time series, uh, which is called a spread. And uh, this spread is supposed to be stationary because we will use it. We can use uh, other tests, for example, the augmented ticker for the test to test the stationarity of the series and then uh, set some threshold. If it passes the threshold, then this means that it is a uh, uh, stationary with certain statistical significance. And based on these spreads, we will then compare the short-term fluctuations with the long-term equilibrium relationship, right? So the, to, to see if there's a temporary market fluctuation. So this is where we formulate a strategy and generate the trading signals, uh, specifically in terms of the entry and exit points, right? So that's uh, in a nutshell about co-integration. And here I listed uh, two formulas uh, for linear regression. So in linear regression, we're assuming uh, a fixed linear relationship. So the entity uh, of interest are two, two variables. So Y represents our target variable. It could be the stock price of one, uh, one stock price. And we have uh, another variable, which is called independent variable, representing uh, another stock price, right? So we have two series here. And what we want to do is to use the independent predictor to predict the target variable, right? So, and this prediction assumes a linear model because uh, let's ignore the epsilon here. So if we have this relationship, then it means that uh, we have the intercept beta zero, uh, and then mult multiply the, the uh, slope, right? So there's a slope of the line times the input itself. So this gives us a line. Right, so that's why it's called linear uh, regression. And then this epsilon is something uh, which we call the, the, the noise or the error term. And this is something that's uh, not, cannot be modeled by the linear relationship. So, uh, so we may uh, miss uh, some other factors, for example, x2, x3, right, which is not in the model. So anything that cannot be explained by the first two terms, we're going to the third term, right? So this is error. Uh, and we use the error to measure how good is the model. So the error, just by shifting the terms, can be calculated in this way. So this is error. And this is also what we call the spread, right? The spread. And essentially, this is a residual of the linear regression model. All right, so that's uh, how we calculate the spread. And based on that, uh, generate the training signals. So let's uh, dive in more into the co-integration. So we will use the angel uh, Granger test uh, 
uh, so this involves a two-step process. First, we estimate the coefficients of the linear regression model. Right, so uh, uh, so this is again based on the two stocks, a pair of stocks. So this is between one stock uh, as the dependent variable, and then the other stock as the independent variable. We are going to regress one variable against the other. Right, and this is using the ordinary linear scale squares (OLS). Then we calculate the residuals from the linear regression model. So remember how we calculate residuals by just shifting the terms, use the uh, true value. So this is the true value of the dependent, dependent variable minus the prediction, right? It's the predicted target value and the difference gives us the residual. Then based on the residual as a time series, we can test uh, for the stationarity of the residuals using the unit root test. So unit root means uh, uh, the um, the auto correlation uh, for a degree of one. So to assess if the current point is is uh, uh, very much correlated with the previous time point, and if it is, uh, then this gives us the unit root, right? So so uh, so this uh, this is a test, and uh, we can use the augmented decay flow procedure. Right, so this is called ADF test, test for uh, the unit roots. So, and of course, we hope that there's no such uh, unit roots. That, that means these residuals are stationary. So if the residuals are stationary, then the two stocks are co-integrated. Co right? So if they are not uh, uh, stationary, then they will not be co-integrated. So that's how we know that if two stocks are co-integrated or not. And again, if they are, then they exhibit a uh, long-term uh, equilibrium relationship in terms of spread, and then that's uh, and then we can rely on this rely on this spread to generate uh, treating signals. So let's uh, look more uh, talk a bit more about stationarity. So a stationary time series is a time series where well, the statistical properties, right? So of the time series, including the mean variance and covariance at different time points, right? So these are something we can calculate based on the time series, right? And we hope that they are constants, right? So stationary time series means that they are constants and they do not change over time. So no matter which horizon I look at, we always have the same mean, the same variance and covariance. So, uh, and, and uh, this uh, residual spread would follow uh, a normal distribution, right? So, uh, normal distribution means uh, it's basically have two two parameters. Uh, so, so the mean, the, it's just, uh, the average, and then there's the volatility, the standard deviation, right? And they they assume this form. So this is exact a exponential function uh, where I have the sigma square here and sigma square here. So this is just the definition of the normal distribution, and then uh, uh, if the, the time series is stationary, then it will mostly follow. So the range will be uh, normally distributed. The spread will be normally distributed. Uh, so that's uh, what we have as a uh, mathematical uh, background. And then we're going to, again, the last step is to convert the spread to uh, something called z-score. So this score is nothing more than uh, a standardization technique. Right? So we have different skills, but now we want to compare them at the same scale. So this is a measure of how many standard deviations the, the daily spread is from its mean, right? So uh, a standardized score, uh, this is standard score that we can use to compare different uh, distributions. Uh, again, the, this is a simple transformation. We're going to take the original value, um, take off the average, right? Minus the mean and then divide by standard deviation. So this is uh, to, to play the scaling effect. Now we can look at that score. The score in uh, uh, this is a the uniform normal distribution or standard normal, right? And uh, we see that uh, after so this line represents one point nine six, which corresponds to ninety five percent. So this is, which means that um, the probability of this shaded area is uh, five percent, right? Out of the total uh, probability density function, and similarly we have joke here so. Negative, so this is negative one point nine six, which corresponds to again uh, five percent. So the probability of this uh, area is uh, is five percent out of the total probability, right? 
So this also represents something we can uh, we typically do in, in hypothesis testing. So if uh, the null hypothesis, right? So we have the null hypothesis, we have the alternative hypothesis. So if the probability of the null hypothesis falls into this area or this area means it's a small probability incident, right? So which means that if the null hypothesis is true, then the, the chance of this happening is very small, which means uh, the, the, the null hypothesis is probably wrong, right? So that means we can reject the null hypothesis uh, in favor of the alternative hypothesis, which is uh, uh, the two assets are co-integrated in this case. Right, so so that's uh, that's it. And uh, lastly, let's let's talk a bit about uh, how to implement the pair screening strategy. Um, so uh, so here we have the the z scores, right? So this is a z score after standardizing the the sprite. So we can thresh, set one threshold, which is two. Two means that it is above two standard deviations um, from the mean, right? So if the current spread. So if the C score is above two, then we're going to short stop one and long stop two, right? Because uh, we know that there's a price difference and uh, uh, the, 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 the C score is calculated based on the spread and spread is stock one minus stock two. So since the the uh, difference is so high, which is more than two, then stock one will uh, go down in price in the long run. And so then we, we that's why we're going to short it, and then vice versa. Stock two we're going, we're going to on the long position for stock two. Right, and this works similarly for the negative scenario. So if it's negative two, then we're going to long stock one and short stock two. However, when the relationship goes back to a relatively normal range, which could be one in this case, right? Then uh, we're going to so if it's the z scores between negative one and one, we're going to exit the position in both stocks. So so this serves as a sort of a production measure, because if the 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 stock price moves very fast, then it may move against our position. So we will need to do that before uh, before it uh, hurts us. So so that's why it serves as stop loss or lock in profit uh, production measure. And then, so this is our axis signal, and in between, we will just maintain the positions between uh, these two lines, so that uh, uh, so that we continue to enjoy the temp the profit uh, based on the temporary market fluctuations. Right. So that's it for this video, and uh, thanks for watching.